All right, everybody, this is Ross. We are looking at a number of fig varieties today. I've picked a number of trees. I went away on vacation, came back, and this is some of my harvest here. We could have picked more, but we're not gonna get rain until tomorrow night, so I wanted to have some of the fruits on the trees ripen for one more day. One more day on the, on the tree makes the biggest of difference and changes the total complexity and even the eating experience, really of the fruits. We have a number of varieties today that we're gonna discuss, talk about each individual variety and the flavors and the textures and really open your eyes hopefully to the amazing genetic diversity that exists within Ficus carica and, and these fig trees. And kind of drive home the point that I think it's really well worth having more than just one variety. Um, and definitely doing your research on the variety that you choose, it makes the biggest of difference uh, people have different palates. Um, people want very different things out of their figs, I find. Uh, you know, my grandfather, as an example, really wants a honey fig, uh, something like Dotato that's, you know, really thick and creamy and, you know, um, almost like an applesauce-like consistency in the fruit that's really sweet, tastes just like a fig, and that's what he grew up with. You know, that's really what he appreciates the most. And you guys may have a total different um, thing that you want to have in your figs than everybody else. So these are vastly different than each other. I mean, we have, you know, figs that here are uh, blue. I mean, the Sativa de Argentile is blue. We have black figs. We have yellow figs. We have green figs. We have white figs. We have uh, figs of different shapes, different sizes, different eyes, different flavor profiles. We have, you know, brown figs, um, you name it. We even have figs that are seedlings. We have figs that were bred. Believe it or not, we have figs that were wild seedlings. We have figs that were grown in France, grown in Portugal, grown in Italy, grown in Croatia, grown in, um, you name it, for, uh, in France as well. I mean, all over the place. And you can find them all here in the United States. Pretty amazing. Um, so let's start with some of these varieties here. Let me just tell you what we have. We had a bunch of hardy Chicago types. We have uh, Norella which has become one of my favorite hardy Chicago's along with Azores Dark and Conde. We also have uh, Sicilian Dark, which this is not really a very tasty hardy Chicago, but planted in really dry soil, it's amazing. We also have Monaco. This one here is from the country of Monaco. And it really isn't that great. In fact, it's really, I don't know if I'll get to really eat any of these that are that edible um, because a lot of them have fermentation here mold. If I open them up, which I'll show you guys at the end, you'll see what I'm talking about. So again, a lot of this is just where you live. What's the weather like where you live? And are the conditions there going to support the variety that you choose or really let the variety that you choose shine? Uh, we also have here some LSU figs. These are LSU Tiger. We have LSU Huye. And then we have a Celeste fig, which is what actually the LSU figs were bred with in the breeding program there. This one's called Stallion. We have some uh, Ronde de Bordeaux from France that are super dried, super well ripened. These are gonna be amazing. We have Smith, one of my absolute favorite figs. This is from Croatia, been grown in Louisiana for like a hundred years. This is um, Feather River. This is a California seedling that's rather new. A lot of the California growers are finding new stuff. We have uh, Hativ de Argentile from the Argentile region of France. We also have uh, Fico Secco, which is uh, Moro de Caneva, an Italian variety. We also have here Sister Madeline's Yellow. This is from a church that Sister Madeline, I don't know, lives at. Um, and a grower here in the United States found it, I think, either in Arkansas or Michigan, I'm not sure where. He found that one, but this is uh, De Ponte de Quartiera. It's a Portuguese variety. And then lastly, we have actually Little Ruby, which was a seedling of Hardy Chicago, believe it or not. And um, so we got some pretty good figs here. That's amazing. Uh, the history of these things, where they come from, and really the best part is today because I'm eating them. And people ask me, Ross, what do you do with all these figs? Well, I eat them, guys. I eat them. And um, you'll eat them too. If they're this good, you're going to eat them. And I haven't really given a fig, believe it or not, that was this well ripened. We've had a lot of dry weather recently. These figs, a lot of them are dried up, shriveled up on the tree. 
this is really hard to find here in this climate. And when I give somebody a, of a fig this quality, they, I have not met anybody that didn't like it. Um, so for my money, uh, you're going to love it too. Let's start out with, um, I want to really try actually these Hatib de Argentio figs because I don't think I've ever gotten them this right before. Um, oh my, that looks good. So you're going to hear a lot of noises here, guys. Um, I guess I apologize in advance, but you know, I'm really passionate about these fruits, as you probably already know. And when I eat something really good, I can't help it. Um, it just is what it is. This is Hatib de Argentile, guys. That, that is beautiful. Definitely the most beautiful fig out here today. Wow, we right? Isn't that isn't that something? And look at the skin. It's pretty much blue on the outside. It's blue. It really is a gray fig though most of the time. But I guess if you get them this right, give the uh, figs enough sunlight, they'll get more of that color. Let's try it. Incredible. So thick, the texture, we're gonna talk about the texture, we talk about the, the flavor profile. The texture is so sticky, so jammy, and thick like a col de dame. But it's more gooey than anything. It's like a pancake batter um, in terms of thickness. Uh, it's incredible. That is seriously one of the best figs I probably have ever eaten. The fruit, uh, the fruit, the fruit flavor, excuse me, in that is incredible. A lot of figs just taste very figgy, like uh, this little ruby as an example here. These are really dried, really nice dried, dried figs. And when they turn dried like this, they'll increase their fruit flavor quite a bit. Uh, excuse me. They'll increase their dried fruit flavor, which is typically like a dried fig, a date, a raisin. A lot of dried fruits, even a dried persimmon, has a very similar-ish flavor to it. And here's the little ruby. Um, again, this one here is what I would say is very figgy. Tastes just like a fig, obviously. But the Hatib de Argentio, my point, essentially is that the Hatib de Argentio, it, it, that's not really what I'm picking up. It, it's almost like a totally different fruit. It's not like I'm eating a fig. It's really like I'm eating a cherry. It's like I'm eating um, a really intense grape, fruit punch flavor, uh, super sweet, like ridiculously sweet. I wonder what the bricks is on this. It's tangy, it's acidic, it's well balanced. And the texture is amazing. To be honest with you, it's really one of the best tasting figs you can grow. And it's also, believe it or not, one of the best performing figs I can grow here. And I've been talking about this fig for years, and I don't think people really realize it. Um, here's the other one here. It's still good, not as good, not as ripe, but amazing. Um, really nice quality. You'll find that cherry flavor and that really nice berry flavor, that fruitiness that comes out when it starts to ripen more. Um, they're very thick, and I would say they're almost, almost at a cakey consistency, like Smith is, and the Col de Noms are, but it's more along the lines of something else, like um, when you really have a well-ripened fruit, it's, it's typically very jammy and sticky and gooey and uh, like a pancake batter consistency. Just really, really thick. Now, the little ruby here, let's just taste this. This is a one bite fig. They're so small, but they pack an incredible flavor. And, and you believe it or not, they do have a mild berry flavor to them. But a lot of this is in the dried, dried fruit. Uh, an elderly woman, an elderly Italian woman named Gina that my family and I are really good friends with 
in Ocean City, New Jersey. I went down there and planted her a fig tree many years ago, and she, hers is doing fantastic, by the way. But uh, I gave her this weekend uh, some little ruby figs I picked about five days ago. She ate them and said they were the best figs she ever had. And she's been eating figs her whole life from many different trees from her family, uh, all kinds of different Italian people throughout her life. And she says, this is the best one. And I said to her, you know what? I have some that are even better. Um, but by no means is this a bad fig. It's, it really is quite something. And it doesn't have a special name. It deserves way more attention. Um, the Atite Argentile, we could say, probably is at a 4.9 out of 5. That was just as good as it gets, almost. Now, the Little Ruby is just a totally different fig. Like, it just has so much of that dried fruit flavor, like a, an aged red wine. Um, like a date, like a dried persimmon. That's what I'm eating, it feels like. I'm, I feel like I'm eating the flavor of a dried fruit in, the, in the, a version here of a fresh fig. So it's amazing. And you don't find this in other figs as much. Like this is a pretty difficult flavor to find. That one there is fermented. So you don't want to eat them fermented. That's why I like to cut them open and see. Um, but these, most of the time, you could just plop them right in your mouth. Um, one bite, done. On to the next one. One bite, let's see what the inside looks like. A little bit of fermentation here, we won't eat that one. It did rain a little bit. It's not the most rain resistant fig. And I should have picked some of these yesterday or the day before, but I wasn't here. So these really went for a long time, again. One bite, done. Really good. Um, all right, let's move on to the Moro de Caneva. This is just an incredible fig. I know I've talked a lot about in the past about its performance. It's really the main thing with this because it has such a nice shape. Elongated, it dries well, ripens well. It's a commercial fig actually in Italy and even different parts of the, of the world. Not the best tasting. But, look at that. Look at that. Woo! That doesn't look good. I don't know what looks good. You guys need to get your eyes checked. Let's try it before I even say anything about the flavor. Oh. oh, okay. That's amazing. I really like the skin, actually. The skin has got like a little bit of like a rougher texture to it. Gives it a little bit of like a different, nice eating experience. Um, this one was so well ripened that I have to say, actually the flavor is really quite something now. If you don't pick them though, at this absolute perfect state like this, they're um, above average, but I would say they top out at like a 4.5 out of 5. Um, very, very good consistency. Thick, jammy, figgy. Uh, not on the figginess level as this little ruby, but mild berry flavor and very sweet. And it just a, it's just a very different fig, very different eating experience than this little ruby. And I would say because the Little Ruby has a different flavor profile, I'd probably give it, you know, almost like a 4.6. Um, probably a 4.6. I think that's, I think that's probably right. Um, the Moro de Caneva, that particular one was a 4.7. Um, maybe even a 4.8 but typically they top off at a 4.5. And so for that reason, they, they ripen the most consistently amazing, but it's not the best tasting fruit. However, just absolutely fantastic variety because it ripens those quality fruits the most consistently and the, 
the one that really I'm gonna enjoy the most is the one that's typically the most ripe. And a day like this, we have a lot of figs that are very ripe, a lot of figs that are, um, you know, picked at like the height of the season, basically. <laughs> Let's try this guy here. This is Feather River. Nope, we got a problem here. That's, that's a shame, because this I think was gonna be a great, a great choice, but you could see all that mold in there. And this is kind of what the uh, Monaco fig is gonna look like on the inside. This is quite a tasty fig, typically, I've had so far. It's got like, um, uh, like a jelly, really sweet jelly fruitiness to it. Quite different than uh, a lot of other figs. I kind of compare it actually to this Sister Madeline's Yellow, which is really what I wanted to try next side by side because it's kind of got this similar flavor profile to it that you'll find in other figs as well, like um, Canadria, Atriano, Laterola, Lindhurst White, White Triana, Unknown Mitica. There's so many of these named figs and they're in this, they're in, all in this category. So let me get you this half. We had some mold there on the top. So we're not gonna eat that obviously. Oh wow, super, super sweet. Definitely among the sweetest figs that I have. Here's Sister Madeline's yellow. Really, really nicely well ripened. Look at that honey in there. It's really super sweet, guys. Fruity, too. Medium in terms of berry, I would say. And then also has like, uh, you know, a jelly or a consistency. It's not like the jam as much. It's more along the lines of like a looser syrup, jelly, congealed uh, texture to it. Let's, let's try the other half. Very good. Again, quite different than the others. Its own little separate category. And uh, for that, I do appreciate it. And probably would give it again like a, like a 4.6, um, 4.5, something like that. Um, eh. Maybe today that one in particular was maybe a 4.4, something like that. Maybe, uh, what did I give the little ruby? Some of these I said I think can be a 4.6. Others are like a 4.4. And some can obviously be worse than that, like a 4.0. Really just enjoy them both to a really high degree. Uh, it's just hard to, yeah, I probably put them both at a 4.4, four, 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 somewhere in there. All right, let's move on. This is LSU Huye. I guess we can move on to the Celeste figs. Wow, that looks so good. We're also gonna cut open here Stallion. We're gonna speed this up a little bit, I think. Whoa, wow, that's beautiful. And then we have a dried, pretty much dried LSU Tiger. This is gonna be the real treat probably. Haven't had one of these in a few years, especially from an in-ground. Whoa. <laughs> oh man, that looks so good. You know, LSU Tiger really is just like a bigger Celeste. It's like double the size. There we have it. Beautiful, super well ripened. That's LSU Tiger. Stallion, look how red that is inside. It's almost purple, that's amazing. And then we have LSU Huye, which is a very different flavor profile. Even though it was bred with Celeste. Um, We'll get into that in a minute. It's really the only honey fig we have the tasting today. Well, maybe Taponte will be, we'll see. We'll see what we got here. But there's a whole different category of figs. We got the, the figs we talked about, Little Ruby is quite figgy. Um, 
we talked about the berry ones where, you know, Sister Madeline's yellow, that's Yves de Argentile are quite berry. Smith is quite berry, and so is Rondé Bordeaux. Um, let's try the Stallion first. Very curious to see what the supercharged Celeste, I've been waiting so many years for this fig. It's really good, actually, wow. It's, it's a little bit better than most Celeste that I've had, yeah. It's got more of a berry flavor to it, kind of like Black Celeste. So that's really interesting. I'm gonna keep an eye on that one a bit more. Here is LSU Tiger, a little bit of mold or something there at the eye. We'll get that out. You can tell the seeds are like everywhere in this one. Oh yeah. Whoa. This really is like a dried fig. Like I put it in the, in the dehydrator and dried it for a bit. This is incredible. Super sweet. Really nice seed crunch. I, the outer shell of it is very different than the pulp. The skin is very chewy. This is uh, my friend Dan Foster in Michigan raves about all the time. Chewy skin. It has a very nice chewy skin to it. Kind of like the Moro de Caneva, but not as chewy, um, or more they could have is just not as chewy, but you could tell that the differentiation there between the pulp and the skin is definitely there and um, should be noted. Very different eating experience uh, on that one. And I find that actually LSU Huye is the same way. Let's try it. Not so much. I can't believe how red this is. That one's very, very good. Just very sweet, fruity, melon flavors. Not as ripe as it, it probably could be. And maybe I picked that one too soon. Um, but still very, very good. That is like a, a honey fig that also has fruitier berry notes to it. And so, the honey figs really do kind of taste like a bit of honey or brown sugar. Maybe even have a lighter flavor to them. Um, you know, melon type flavors to them. And they obviously taste like a fig. Uh, but then that one there is really nice, in my opinion, because I really like the berry flavored figs. And that has a nice berry flavor to it. Um, I probably would say the LSU Tiger was the most well ripened and therefore is the best. I think the Stallion probably was like a 4-3, 4-2. LSU Tiger a 4-5, maybe a 4-6. Probably that one actually, I would give a, I would give that a 4-7. It's just so well ripened. And then um, the LSU Huye, again, not as ripe as it should be, probably a 4-0. Yeah, if that was more ripe, Probably could go up to a four or five, something like that. Um, let's try the Rondé Bordeaux. This is gonna be, in my opinion, well, this is definitely one that I'm looking forward to a lot. This has really been outstanding this year. <laughs> this is like ruby red. And it's so nice how it contrasts with the skin. Ooh. Ooh, it's like blood red, guys. It's like a, it's like a nice rare steak, nice purple, grass-fed organic steak that's got an amazing color to it. Wow. And these are just picked perfectly. Really, let's just boil it down to that. Pick them at the right time, you can be rewarded. You don't pick them at the right time, it's not even close to this experience. People don't even. I can't believe they don't pick their figs at the right time. It just blows my mind. Look at that. Look at how deep red that is. Woo! Increíble, right? Isn't that how you say it? All right, let's try this one. Oh, which one's gonna be the best? Probably this guy. Whoa. This one tastes a bit like a plum. Very sweet, 
figgy. The skin uh, tastes a bit spicy, a little bit bitter, a little bit like uh, some kind of spice flavor and bitterness. Contrasts really well with the sweetness and acidity of this fig. It's very complex. Really nice berry flavor. This berry flavor is um, just a small notch below Petit de Argentile, and these are like a 4.8. Very, very good. I love the skin and the complexity that that brings. Let's try Smith. This one, I would say, is going to be the best one. <laughs> it typically has the best texture and the best flavor. It always ripens reliably, super well. Um, this really is just an outstanding fig. And these are really ripe. I have some here, one here actually, that is not that ripe, or at least as ripe, I should say. And it is still incredible. Um, you're gonna really, I think we're gonna see is a difference here in texture and flavor and overall experience in this, depending on when we pick them. How nutso is that? Whew, look how dark this is. So these really have a nice berry flavor to them. Um, absolutely amazing, this fruit. Another variety that really Europe doesn't have. You know, it's hard to find that fig in Europe. Uh, same thing with Petit de Argentile. Really nice figs that I uh, would like to see in more growers' hands. Let's try it. Whoa, really thick. You can just tell, guys, it's on another level. I mean, these Rondé Bordeaux are so good. But this Smith, guys, is just, it just is a different animal, it's just a different beast. Um, wow, that one was really ripe. Like it congealed. Oh my God. This thing is so good. It has so many different layers to it. This one was actually really figgy, like a dried fruit. That's amazing. And then here's the one that's not as ripe. This one here is more acidic. Spicier flavor, really cakey. Very sweet, nice berry flavor. Berry flavor really comes out though in this one here that's more ripe. And it instead of having a cakier profile, it has more of a jammy or gooiness to it, like the like the um pancake batter we talked about. Um I don't know what it is exactly, but some of them turn out to be cakey like a cold adam. Some of them are really thick, like some other figs. Uh but regardless, it's just got some of the best texture you can eat in a fig. It's just uniform. You know, not the difference there between the skin and the pulp. There's just one uniform cake. It's like eating fig cake. Um, nature's really best confection, uh, in my opinion. Let's try this one here, DePonte, rather new. Haven't had a ton of experience with it. I do know that it's just not performing great. But again, dry weather. This should be amazing. And so we only have mold at the eye. That's a good sign. This one I imagine will be along the lines of a LSU Huye. So when we visually look at the fruits, we can determine maybe what we're dealing with here, what we're expecting in terms of flavor. And then when we eat them, we confirm that. Like drinking a wine, doing a wine tasting. You smell the wine first, you imagine what it will taste like, and then you confirm it when you eat it or swish it around your mouth. Hmm. 
So here we have Monaco, and uh, I'm not really sure what you guys saw with the last fig that we tasted, the Ponte de Quartiera. I said it was a 4-0. Has a really nice figure flavor, honey fig, a little bit of berry notes, similar to the LSU Huye, but in my opinion, a lot looser in texture, juicy, and not exactly what I go for in a fig. And uh, it's just not something that performs well here, which segues us into Monaco. After cutting these open, you can see just how sad and disgusting some of these figs are with mold on the inside. That browning color there is fermentation and spoilage. You also see that here in the Feather River, which I, I think will be a bit in, uncommon with that variety. We'll find out more in the future. I'm surprised to see that. Uh, but these guys struggle. You know, I have one here that actually looks pretty decent. Um but not as ripe as it should be, you know? Let's try it anyway. Hmm. Quite watered down. Weird texture. I don't think they're really ripening properly. Um, I don't think this fig is really doing well in this particular climate, but I know that this is a tasty fig. I've tasted it before in prime weather when it did ripen well, and it's a really tasty fig. Along the lines of the LSU Huye and the Ponte de Quartiera. But for my money, right, I'd rather have not this. If it has a very similar flavor profile, I'd rather have the LSU Huye that we tasted, which has a similar, similar profile, but performs way better and way more consistently here. And that's kind of what this is all about, this video. There was a lot of figs ripe really well ripened at the same exact time, which is not always something you can do here. It's just not, you know, this is a nice little luxury that we had. And I really am thankful to have this experience. But the one usually is just the best tasting is going to be the one that's the most ripe. And so for me, I wouldn't go with some of these other ones um, that get so damaged like this and have problems. You know, even the little Ruby had some problems with the a little bit of fermentation. Yeah, maybe I could have picked some of them a little bit earlier. Uh, Ronde Bordeaux is not perfect either. You know, Smith and Hatib the Argentile, the beauty about them, and same thing with Moro de Caneva, they taste so great and they perform so great. Hardy Chicago is the same thing, although this year we're having some issues with birds and ants. Uh, the organza bags are not helping either, but that's kind of the moral of the story here. That was some of the reviews. Uh, the best fig here, probably 4.9s are the Smith and the Atib de Argentile. Uh, Ron de Bordeaux second, right after those. And maybe the Moro de Caneva was right after that with the LSU Tiger. And then I would probably put somewhere in there the little ruby, the Sister Madeline's yellow. Um, and I think probably Hardy Chicago would be right in there as well with, the, with those as a 4.6, probably. Um, hopefully I'm not forgetting any of the other varieties I tasted, but those are probably the best today. I thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time, all right? Hit that subscribe button, check out our blog. It's getting dark out here. Grow some of these awesome figs, guys. We'll see you soon, all right? Take care.